Welcome to the Mount Man Chronicles. Be comfortable with the uncomfortable. Live, learn, and explore. Hey, this is Paul. Hope you're doing well. We are home working in our garage today. We are back from our trip from Montana and Wyoming. Railing's in the house. I'm out here in the garage just kind of assessing things. If you'd like to take a look at our last videos, um, the videos are a set of three from Montana, and then there's another video in Wyoming, go ahead and go to the playlist that we have available. What today's video is gonna be about is how to wire up and power to your uh, Mission Overland trailer. I have sleep apnea, so having power in the trailer is really important to me. I use several different battery packs. I have three of them, actually. Um, one to power my refrigerator my Jeep, which is a unique wiring system I use as a backup power there. So I do not use those when I'm in the trailer. I actually have a li two lithium batteries in the trailer, which have wires off the solar on the top. I have another video about that in my review of the Mission Overland trailer. But today's video is going to be how I uh, wired in my 2000 watt inverter into my trailer. So I run my 2000 watt inverter which comes from the battery, which powers my CPAP machine and various other things as I need them. Also, I'm gonna be wiring it up to uh, near the fridge slide in case I need to run a blender or something like that, in case we're having some festivities on the trail. I am, so today I'm gonna to walk you through on the different steps I took. I'm not gonna, it's not an install video. I've already done the install, but I will take you through the parts and wires I used, the different pieces I did and how I wired it. I hope you enjoy it. Um, would hopefully find some interest in it in this and if you do remember like and subscribe give me some comments on what you thought about the video and how it helped you I appreciate it thank you take care so we're gonna start at the business end of the trailer you'll see here that I have our energy 2000 watt inverter here um, right now it's off that basically is wired into my lithium batteries that's wired into the solar and so forth um, so I had two choices early on. I was just running a plug through uh, the bottom section where the heater is and coming up under the bed and, and plugging it directly into here. Um, that didn't work too well for me. I had wires that I had to leave the cabinets open, but that was the solution to my problem. So what I did is I went out and I purchased the, well, I purchased wire, purchased indoor outdoor wire to uh, run through uh, 12, uh, sorry, 120 wire to run into the trailer. The nice thing about the Renogy is it does have the connectors on the top, so it's really easy to wire in. You got a neutral, a ground, and a positive. And then so you just wire them into the top. So all I did really was this. You'll see right down here, I drill a hole through this side. I used a, a basically a watertight seal on it and ran that through to the cab. So then I'm clear. That wire runs around. This wire here goes underneath. It's tie wrapped. Runs all the way through the top up here. So that wire comes through there. Through this hole here. Through the hole right where my finger is pointing to. You can see here. Goes around. Goes all the way under the bed into here. Now I will say this was a lot thicker than I thought it was. Um, putting that nut to make it sealed tight was a bear. That was probably the longest piece of this whole project. What I did is I put it in there, put the nut in there, then I had to screw it with a wrench from the outside. Now looking at it from the middle, I don't know how well this shot's going to come out, but you can see in the middle there, there's two of those nuts. And it's right there on the other side of that red wire. So there's a nut on the side where the cat, where the basically the battery tray is, and there's a watertight seal on the side of the cab. So no water's going to get in either. I've tested it. No water's getting through either of those. The hardest part of the whole thing is drilling that hole where the arrow is. What I did is I started small, got through the metal. I went to the other side and broadened the metal um, on the far side. So I drilled the hole all the way through in the center of the far side. And then I went through and I widened it on the far side, then widened it in the middle and then we ran the wire. I did have somebody help me run the wire that is an electrician. Um, his help was appreciated. I don't, I play with electricity, but I am not an electrician. So I used his help. So that's what we did to wire it up. 
I found, I've heard of some people trying to go from underneath, cutting holes in the body pan, doing things like that. Um, I don't like doing that. I don't like adding more exposures for critters and stuff like that to get into. I found this way worked really well. It was watertight. It worked so far really well. I've been through water in our last trip. We did go through water and no water seeped into the cab at all. Now I ran my 110 around, up and under through the side down here, up and under, you can see it there, I hope, and under and through the cab. I love Amazon. So one of the things I went through is I went for little watertight nuts. So, so these are water nuts, they have a seal on the inside. They have a seal on the outside. They come in a variety of sizes. I bought a variety of size pack. You'll see here that they have a rubber seal inside. They have a grommet on the outside. They have a rubber seal in here. So when you tighten them up, they seal really, really tight and they've worked really well for me on multiple things. I even used them on my Jeep. And so when I tightened them up and they gave a water seal, so far, no complaints. And I have various sizes here. I've all the way down to little wire have some medium wire and this one you really can see the rubber seal in it and then I have some bigger monster wire one. So that's basically what I needed was that about uh, 14 feet of uh, indoor outdoor wiring. Um, I wanted it to be waterproof and uh, a couple long drill bits and it was done. About four hours to get it done. Hardest part was drilling that hole and tightening the water nuts was just a bear, but it's working so far. You'll see there right now I have a, it plugged in because I was vacuuming, but you'll see that the plug there is what I plug my CPAP machine in. I just run it alongside of the cushion and it goes in the CPAP machine. Right now I have a power strip in here because I was vacuuming and doing stuff like that. I actually used my, uh, my power supply and my batteries and well, it was plugged in through the, the power supply of the trailer to vacuum. But it works really, really well. I use my CPAP at night and am able to have power in the car and power there. I'm toying with the idea to run another little outlet box here in this area so I can plug in a, a, um, a blender or something like that. If I'm out camping and I want to fire up something fun, make some uh, adult beverages or even kid beverages. You know, no, you might want to make a milkshake on the trail. Um, I know occasionally I'll bring an otter pop for the kids when they come, so and that's where the freezer comes in. But that's a whole other story. Wondering how to so if you're wondering how to get power to your trailer, it's as easy as that. My hope is you enjoyed this video, and I just wanted to say thanks. And let me know if you have any questions. Remember to like and subscribe below. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye.